Hello, mesdames and messieurs. In this video, I just want to do a, a really cool, fast tip on how to use a brush in Lightroom. It is the most powerful uh, tool in Lightroom. It's kind of a beginner tutorial, but there's some really cool tricks I'm sure you've never heard. So let's get started. All right, so here we have a beautiful photo from Iceland I shot last year. Let me just do a quick retouching. I'm just gonna open the shadows, bring on the highlights. I'm gonna hold on the Option key, the Alt key on Windows, and I'm gonna set my black point. Uh, my black point is pixels which are 100% black. So I like to have about 2% of my photo 100% black. What you see in blue here is 100% black. And then I hold on the Option key and I do the same thing on the white here. I like to do it manually. There is ways to do it automatically, but I like to do it manually. So what you see here in blue is 100% white, meaning it's burned, there's no more information, so I'm gonna back it down, something like this. Okay, cool. And then maybe add a bit of contrast. Let me clean up the photo because there was a lot of sensor dust. I was on that beach. Oh my God, Iceland is the best. And uh, this is one of my favorite photo of Iceland. I mean, not my favorite, because it was not very colorful, but I really like this photo and it's already looking kind of cool, but I want to take it to the next level with a brush. So for this, I'm going to lower the exposure and we're going to do something that's called, and we are going to do something that's called a clair obscure, meaning we go from darkness and we relight it. So where is the brush? The brush is located here, you click on it. And basically the idea is, um, there's a whole bunch of settings here uh, that uh, you can do. And when you brush, these settings are going to be applied here. So I'm going to double click here on effect uh, to put everything down to zero and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some exposure uh, A lot of exposure. I'm going to overdo this, but I want to show you a few things first. Let's talk about size So size you can change it here And you can see in real time or even better if you have a mouse and you can use the magic the, the middle mouse And you're on the screen you can make it bigger or smaller, which is kind of cool. So that's the way I do it It's faster Okay, and then the other one the the other thing is the feather. Okay, the feather, so let me show you something. If I put the feather at the zero and I start brushing, you will see you're gonna get some really weird results. So I'm gonna, you see it created a pin as I brushed and it's not good. But if I now put the feather at 100%, you see there's two circles now, you see how I changed the feather. Let me make the, the brush bigger so you can see. As I change, basically this is gonna be the soft part, okay? So I always use it at 100%, almost all the time. Let me make it a bit smaller and I'm gonna brush. And now you can see, but you can less see uh, the brush stroke. So that's very important. The next one is flow and density. Let me put flow at 100% and let me put uh, the feather at 0% so you can see. So flow at 100%, this is what happens. Now let's go to flow at 50%. You see, it's less powerful and we put flow at 0% and now nothing happens or just a little bit, okay? Same thing, let's put flow back and density on 100%. So I'm at density 100%, I'm gonna put density at 50% and it's very similar to what flow does and then put it at 0% and nothing happens. So basically flow in density to make it simple is how much energy you're putting out on this brush or data. I like when it comes to dodge and burning, and in this case, dodging meaning making it brighter, I like to keep my flow and density in the 70s. Because I find with a soft brush, I can do some cool dodging, uh, and it's not so visible in your face. Now in this case, it's way too much. My rule of thumb when I do dodging is basically to go like at 0.71 or something, 0.60, uh, yeah, not more. but. It still does something, check it out. If you wanna see the before and after, at the end of the panel, you have this little uh, thing here, before, after, before, after. Kinda of cool. By the way, guys, uh, very important. If you can just smash that like button, it makes a huge difference. And if you did not subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do. Also, I try to do weekly videos. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think about this video, what you would like to learn. I try to do like, right now I'm a lot doing like sections of Lightrooms uh, by section. And like, tell me what you want to, whether it's on Lightroom, Photoshop, on composition, you know, composition, uh, te photography techniques, you know, gear, whatever you want. I read all your comments. All right, so now I want to make a new brush and this time I want to add um, a lot of exposure and I want to add some mist. So to add some mist, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go minus clarity and minus dehaze and I'm going to brush here in the back. 
and it's going to add a whole bunch of mist. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, it's a little too much, so I can lower the exposure and maybe lower the dehaze and lower the clarity. Uh, yeah, something like that. But it's kind of cool. And if you want to see the before and after, before, after. So, and let's say you don't like this or you said, oh, I put it too much on the mountain. I want it to be more on the water. Well, make sure, so if you over that little circle, that pin, you can see in red where I brushed the mist. And if you over, if you click here and you're over there, you can see where I brushed on the first brush. So I want to correct the first brush. I'm going to click on this one and you can use the option key. Option key is the most used key in Lightroom. And I can, and it becomes an eraser that I can make bigger or small using the middle mouse. And I'm going to basically erase the mist pass on the top of the mountain. So now it's still there, but just on the bottom. Check it out. Before, after. And if I put my mouse over here, you can see that the mist pass is much lower. Okay, I can make it even more, more lower by making a bigger, uh, bigger brush with the uh, eraser. See how it's a minus? It's an eraser because I'm holding Alt and I'm just gonna do that and that's gonna erase it, but it's gonna keep it on the water, okay? Okay, it's still there on the water. Another way you can, you can see where the, you have brush is you can click here on the first pin and you can click here on show selected Mac overlay and you can see where you brushed or I can click here and I can see where I brushed here. Okay, maybe I don't want to add mist there or maybe I want. Okay, now I'll show you something really cool. I'm going to create a new brush and this is something not a lot of people know about this. And let's say I want to make, I want to make that snow pop out, but not the mountain, just the snow. So check it out. I'm going to double click on effect. I'm going to add some exposure. I'm going to add some clarity and a lot of exposure actually. And I'm going to make a small brush and I'm going to paint. Oh, I'm going to take this show selected mask. Away. I'm going to paint on the mountains where the snow is. But you see, it's kind of everywhere. I just want it to be on the snow. So check it out. I can go here with my brush selected, range mask off, and I can go to luminance and I can move my range mask to the right, a lot to the right, and check it out. Before, it's everywhere, after, and it's only on the white. And you can decide how much you want it to be just on the white here. You can even fine tune it here. And check this out. I only made the white snow come out and nothing else. Before, after, before, after. Okay, and one more cool trick with the brush. Let's say, uh, because it actually works with other, the gradient, and the circle, let me show you. So if you take a gradient, let's say I wanna make that sky darker. I'm gonna double click on effect. I'm gonna lower the exposure. I'm gonna click and drag. Uh, I'm gonna overdo it so you can see. And I like, it gives me a moody sky, but it's it's not influencing the mountain. I don't want it to influence the mountain. So two solutions. One is uh, the solution of using a luminosity mask, which I actually did a whole video dedicated on that. See somewhere, you must have a link to this one. So you basically what I explained in this video, you can move this to the right. And now most of the sky is going to be affected and not the mountains. But there is another way. There is another way. You can click here, not on this brush, but on this brush. And now you see you have a brush, okay? And basically, let me show you if I do the show selected mask over there. You see, I can see in red where my gradient is going to be influenced. If I brush, I'm going to add some red. Okay, I don't want that. I actually want the opposite. So same thing, I can hold on the Option key, make a small brush, and now I'm gonna erase the effect of the gradient on the mountain. I only want, let me make it a bit bigger, very soft. I only want the sky to be darkened and not the mountain. So let's take that out and you will see. Check it out. And now if I go before and after, it only the sky is influenced. It's a bit too much, so what you can do is you can do a bit of wrench mask on top of it. You can mix both things. And now we have a darker sky. I think I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna uh, make this go a little higher up. But uh, that's the general idea. Okay, now one more cool thing about the brush that I wanna show you is let's say I want a brush and I wanna make this water a little more bright, but not the sand. So if I take a regular brush and double click on effect to put everything down to zero, add some exposure, let me overdo it. And I brush here. You see, it makes the sand brighter and it makes the sea brighter. I don't want that. So there is an option called auto mask. And the way auto mask work is as long as your plus is 
on the white on a very contrast contrasty area i mean there's a lot of difference between you know the white here and the black here check this out i'm going to make a small brush now if i brush here it's only going to affect the um it's only going to affect the water and not the sand that's what auto mask is for it's beautiful auto mask can make so it's too much i'm going to erase it but it's a really cool feature i only use it for this kind of you know when you come close to a border but check it out um before after i think i want to add more mist here so i'm going to add a new brush new brush double click on effect add a bit of exposure minus clarity minus dehaze i just want to add a bit of mist here in the back like in the back here okay it's way too much it's too strong on the back so hold on you can hold on the up the option key and can you raise the effect a bit it's too much and then i can of course lower the clarity and the dehaze so it's not that strong and voila i can click on done and check it out oh sorry go back here you have to be active on the brush and this is going to give you the before all the brush stroke and after uh, it totally changes the photo make sure uh under this video you will find you will find the shortcuts for lightroom uh, it's just a really quick page you can just print and it's gonna blow your mind also you're gonna find um a lot of free goodies including my free masterclass on how to find your voice as a photographer it's a one hour course on so that you can find your voice as a photographer i think it's so important today as an artist as you as you grow as you start learning that you have a very strong voice and i have a really cool technique for this check it out uh you know you, you can see all the big photographers in the world like i can see them on instagram when they post a photo uh you know if i see an answer lamb photo for example even if i don't see his name i know it's an answer lamb photo you know same thing for eric almas you know, Joel grimes trey ratcliffe uh, scott kelby matt Koskowski, uh lindsay adler all the people i love all the photographs i admire henri cartier bresson and so many others um nick page oh my so many like i just see their work and and i know it's them because they have a strong voice how to find that link down below all right guys i'll see you next time